Bonjour everyone, welcome to another Diecast Showcase. So today we're going to be checking out some uh, recent finds, um, just a few main lines basically that I found. Uh, there's a new to me wave of Matchbox that's slowly starting to hit, especially the uh, dollar store chain, Dollarama. Um, so I picked up a few uh, pieces that I had not managed to find yet. Uh, and since uh, today is Friday, we're going to be freeing a couple of uh, pieces open uh, as well. Um, so again, mainly Matchbox, but uh, I will start off with a lone Hot Wheels mainline I managed to pick up. Um, so we're talking about uh, this really cool little Chevy Chevette 76 model year. Nice drag setup. I believe I already have one of these if I'm not mistaken, but I wasn't sure, so I did pick this one up, it was the only one that was there um, at the time of, you know, a little lunchtime hunt, um, and um, if I do have an extra one of these, I will be freeing this one or the other one, whichever, free, and I'm going to be detailing it out uh, after a tampo removal, so I think that should be pretty fun. Um, I am also expecting uh, eventually some um, some uh, axles and wheels um, that I purchased online. So I will be definitely doing a wheel swap on this as well when those arrive. Uh, if I already have a duplicate of it. But we'll see when I get the wheels. I'll dig through and see if I actually already have this one in my uh, pretty sizable carded, ma uh, carded Hot Wheels uh, mainline collection. So, you know, nice uh, copper or burnt orange paint job, some groovy 80s style graphics with uh, a couple sponsors, Bell Helmets, the Chevy Bowtie, plus the Goodyear. No front and rear tampos, but those are the details I'm gonna be adding. And um, yeah, I do like the, the hood scoop on this with the little engine peeking through it that's pretty cool um so yeah uh wheelie bars on the back big five spokes on the back yeah, on the rear axle and some uh cool black faced chrome lipped uh fronts so yeah soul hot uh, soul hot wheel i picked up uh the last uh couple weeks so there you go pretty cool Definitely a casting that I was really anticipating when it was announced and uh, subsequently released. Uh, other uh, castings that uh, I picked up. Um, I did pick up this little um, um, Ford Bronco Sport. So I thought that this was just a color... Uh, a new color wave of the regular Bronco four door, the first Bronco that was released by Matchbox in the main line. Uh, and then noticed uh, while sifting through, um, looking for color variations of other uh, Matchbox we're gonna be looking at a little bit later, that the actual Bronco that I had from Matchbox was actually the regular Bronco, the real Bronco, that I like to call. Um, they're both four doors, but this one, you know, obviously is smaller and this is based on a Ford Escape, so. You know, definitely not as SUV-ish, or definitely not as truckish, should I say, as uh, the big Bronco. But you know, still one of those regular mainstream vehicles that match the Matchbox does really well, and I do like this kind of like gloss grayish, slightly greenish, slightly bluish type of color. And I do like the wheels on this thing. They're very good looking wheels. So uh, yeah, I decided to pick this one up. It's kind of like the same color uh, almost as the uh, National Parks uh, themed vehicles. So I thought that would kind of look cool with a couple National Parks cars that I actually do have. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, so this one, I'm going to stay carded. And I'm going to put it with the other Bronco that I do have in uh, the red metallic. A lot of uh, a lot of the Matchbox uh, tend to come in that nice red metallic the Matchbox does, and we're gonna check out a couple in that uh, color tint as well. Um, now we're gonna be going into uh, pretty much primary colors here. So one new casting that I did pick up was this really nice Buick Skylark. 
convertible 53 model uh, really nice tamp work in the front chrome base with the, the dog dish wheels uh, you got the side uh, bright work done for the most part fortunately lacking door handles for whatever reason but you know if ever I open this that's gonna be swiftly remedied to no tampos in the rear but you know a nice uh, Nice, uh, almost pastel yellow gloss with a black interior. Clear uh, windscreen. Good looking car. Very good looking car. Buicks of the 50s were definitely lookers. Um, and yeah, I'm, this is what I find what Matchbox does best, basically. Nice, clean, olden day vintage cars. You know, not hot rotted in any way, shape, or form. Just basic looking. And, um, yeah, gotta love it. And this, uh, this guy came with a straight eight, which is kind of cool as well. So before the V8s, uh, became pretty much, uh, you know, popularized throughout the American brands. So, um, again, another example of a car that, uh, represents very well what Matchbox does best. This really nice, uh, 57, uh, Ford Custom 300 in a nice gloss red so pretty much same thing as the uh, Buick got the front done which is really nice chrome base steelies but with the black lip as opposed to the chrome lip and on this one we do have the door handles as well as the bright work um, you got the reverse rake uh, a pillars definitely uh, with the wrap around the windscreen which is definitely very 50s and no tampos in the rear but overall, very nice vehicle. Very, very nice vehicle. So uh, happy to add this one to the collection. I do think I have a color wave of this, but um, at this point in time, I'm not sure exactly. So I'll have to sift through the collection of main lines, which I'm uh, going to be purging a bit of because uh, it's getting up there again in numbers. Now, uh, the next two uh, will be shown in conjunction with color waves that I already had of the castings, and that means we will be cracking them open. Uh, so, first and foremost, uh, we're going to be checking out one that I had not found at the time of release of this wave, the Smurf version of the Toyota 4Runner current gen 4 runner basically well technically previous gen because the current gen uh well the new uh one was just released uh, it's already been reviewed by a bunch of uh youtube auto personalities so but yeah this one i'm happy to get my hands on it's uh very cool uh looking in that gloss blue with the black six off-road six spoke wheels um, and since I have acquired this one, this means that the original release in red will be cracked open. Very similar features, except for the color itself. Uh, all the rest is the same, same tamper work, same wheels, except for the color, black versus chrome. And of course, this is the red that I was referring to, the nice, dark, metallic red. So we'll go ahead and open up the red one and we'll put the blue one aside for now we'll check on the details of the red one out of package so um, yeah definitely a very nice casting and I'm happy the matchbox released it in the main line because I was not fortunate to find any of the Hot Wheels premium releases of, of uh, the Hot Wheels version of the casting and well we all know how much those go on the secondary market now this is one of the best dollar cars I find in a while and I mean everything's there you've got all the details where they count as I like to say none where they are not needed so no crazy livery this is stock looking late model forerunner it's a, this is a really nice color of paint as well there's a lot of metallic in there I definitely like it and um, you know uh, since we're opening up some red cars I thought uh, we could maybe open up a few more that uh, have duplicates of in this color um, there's, there's this one stay in the Japanese cars nice uh, little 
Mazda 3 hatchback, the current gen Mazda 3 hatchback. Um, yeah, so uh, basically I do have an alternate colorway that is in the most recent uh, Jap Japanese themed Matchbox 5 pack. The pearl white with the black wheels. So this red with chrome wheels is going to get opened. We've got the uh, regular version of the five spokes and um, uh, six spokes, sorry, in chrome, uh, as opposed to the off road version that is on the Forerunner. Same basic design, but just a different, uh, different color. Here's your little Mazda 3. I've always liked Mazda 3s uh, ever since they were released. And I did like the Protege and the 323 before, 323 before that. Or 323, however you'd like to call it. Um, there's badging on the back. And I'm wondering if this is actually indicative that this is the turbo all-wheel drive model. The little badge down here. Or if it's just a like Sky Active badge or whatever. Um, if I look underneath. Well, I mean... I think it would be the turbo model because if I look here, that sure looks like a diff. And if it's all wheel drive, that means it's the turbo version. So that's kind of cool. Really well done front end uh, Tampa. The rear is kind of weird that the wing is part of the back glass and it's kind of like a frosted part of the window, but. And I've always find that the C pillar on these is very weird in its design and horrible for uh, three quarter rear three quarter visibility, but it is what it is, I guess. You know, that's uh, the way the styling cues are going. We'll put the, these two here and the last in this uh, color that we're going to be opening up since uh, I did uh, manage to obtain the New York taxi livery version will be the first release of the Mustang Mach-E in that same red again but this time with the twin 10 spokes in chrome so very similar colorways three pretty different cars um so yeah let's crack her open and see what it looks like I mean, it's not the nicest looking vehicle, but I mean, it's not the worst looking vehicle. I find it's got a little bit more character than like the Audi e-tron uh, SUVs. Um, definitely better than uh, Volkswagen ID4. You know, not as uh, groovy as the uh, Kia and especially now the high-end uh, electric SUVs, but this is a pretty nice little model. It does have blacked out windows and there doesn't seem to be an interior. Well, kind of a bummer. Not the end of the world. A big fingerprint on the top there. That may or may not have been for me, but either way, it doesn't really matter. Here we go. And, um, yeah, no door handles. Tampos front and rear, again. Pretty well done tampos. And again, that really nice metallic color. Again, we have the uh, rear spoiler here that's part of the back glass, but at the end of the day, since uh, we're talking about um, super dark windows it kind of blends in same for the B pillars that uh, when they're just part of clear glass they kind of look weird but those are easy to black out anyways so yeah pretty cool little uh, electric SUV first one of these I get loose or I take out of the package should I say and uh, it's cool to have a stock version uh, to go with the uh, Hot Wheels uh, <clears throat> the Hot Wheels, a very, uh, very modified, uh, modified one. Uh, there we got a nice spread of metallic red cars. And um, the last uh, matchbox we're going to be freeing uh, is because I managed to find the only the second 70th anniversary liveried car that I will be keeping in the collection as I got rid of... Uh, the three first ones that were released we're talking about the ls400 lexus first gen listed here as a 94 um 
So I believe this would be the facelifted, the first facelifted version. I believe is uh, the LS four hundred K. This it was on its fourth year by that time. So, so this one, um, it's got the two tone silver and uh, graphite color, six spokes again, but with uh, black with the orange lip to go with a little orange pinstripe, which you can see. Uh, separating the two distinct body colors. Lower part of that body cladding is plastic uh, and part of the base, I believe at least. Not sure, but uh, yeah, really nice crisp front tampos. A couple details missing, but easily added. And especially nice rear tampo. Although that Lexus badge is a little bit oversized and you got that 70th anniversary rear plate so definitely this is one that i'm very happy to have and the only other one that i kept is the actual porsche 911 safari so there you go that means that we get to open the first uh, first uh, colorway of this car uh, gold with uh, the lighter gray lower body cladding and again the uh, steelies or dog dish wheels uh chrome lip chrome uh, chrome dish so let's get her open and take a closer look now this one definitely is going to get a wheel swap definitely as soon as i receive slash get the uh, set of wheels that are going to be appropriate and see this is what i don't like about this lower body cladding it looks like the doors were like really badly bondoed or something like that and just like shoddy bodywork but uh yeah overall uh very nice casting again front temples are pretty good although uh i do think that uh, you kind of lose a little bit the um the turn signals and the front lights maybe it's the paint color this is kind of like goldish pearl color and the rear is pretty good pretty good but again i find it stands out better on the uh on the alternate colorway but uh with a new set of uh hoops this thing is going to look great black interior actually no dark gray interior same uh, color interior as uh the lower body cladding and Lower body cladding, despite it being plastic, seems to be separate from the base, actually. The base is not the same color, and clearly you can see that this is two separate pieces. Either way, that'll uh, warrant investigation, but I like the details on the base as well. That whole, the, the exhaust system, the rear, uh, rear subframe and exhaust and all that is very well reproduced uh, or well molded in, so that's good looking stuff. So I can't wait to actually get a new pair of wheel, uh, get a new set of wheels on these. On this, it's gonna look great. Last thing we're gonna open up is gonna be my first Auto World that we're gonna be releasing, and I decided to release the one that uh, was sent to me by Jake at Strictly Diecast, talking about the 3000 GT VR4 first gen, uh, uh, pre facelift. Uh, in the beautiful, beautiful Jamaican blue poly. So, I mean, I've not yet opened any of my Auto Worlds as I have very few since they are not sold in the big box stores, hence are priced a little bit more prohibitively than normally one would wish. But, uh, you know, this is a really cool modern muscle series car with uh as written on the packaging uh die cast metal body and chassis rubber tires and an opening hood which is always a big plus so we can check out that uh 6g72t twin turbo v6 i believe that's the engine code i got the uh, waves here and i am having an extremely hard time jumping on the, the Starion whenever it becomes available because it immediately sells out, which is kind of bad because uh, I really want that. 
uh, casting. I'd love to get it in white, all stock. I believe this is Chrysler Conquest anyways. So I believe, eh? Is it? Yeah, uh, Dodge Conquest. Dodge Conquest TSI. So yeah, basically I'd love to get my hand on one of those to have the slammed one uh, that I have from Inno 64 and then the stock one. But yeah, uh, it's all fine and dandy, but let's get this guy open. All right, let's see what Auto World is all about. So I got this clamshell here, and here's the car. Very nice, very very nice. Now I'll spare you pulling out again the uh, Atomica version and the Matchbox version and all these other versions of that the same cast. Um, we've already seen those a bunch of times, and I'm starting to get quite the variety of. Uh, 3000 GTs. I do also have this the Stealth from Auto World in white. And of course, let's not forget the Hot Wheels Premium version. Uh, I do have the Modern Classics version in red with the deep dish five spokes. So um, I think this wing is plastic and um, metal base indeed. Here it is. Very nice detail. Very nice casting detail. And of course, well, I'm gonna have to get the hood open. And there it is. Three liter V6 twin turbo, all wheel drive, all wheel steering, active aero, with the spoiler that raises, and this little black front lip on the bottom here that actually does lower at a certain speed. Um, electronically damped, dampened adjustable suspension, if we're talking about uh, the. Um, Stiffness. Uh, we got the two-tone seats in there as well, which is great. It is a left-hand drive, and we do have air passing through that steering wheel after closer inspection. So very cool. This was an extremely. This was the most advanced of the uh, you know dream era Japanese uh, sports cars. Definitely the most advanced technologically caused a lot of headaches because it was overly, overly complicated to work on. But at a certain point, now that we are in, you know, 2024, they're actually quite simple compared to modern cars that require a supercomputer to simply reprogram anything. So, very cool. Yeah, so... Very happy to have an Auto World finally loose. Do have the license plate on the back. It reads Twin Turbo without the U in Turbo. So that's pretty cool. Very nicely done. I like the tampo work on this. It's not These lights aren't lensed, but uh, they're very finely detailed. And I love the fact that the logos on this car are very true to scale. So... That's pretty much all I have to show you for today. Hopefully you enjoyed checking out these cool cars with me. If you did, of course, uh, feel free to uh, hit that like button. Hopefully you uh, uh, subscribe and um, yeah, of course, uh, comment your feedback below. Tell me which, uh, which of these do you have? Which one's your favorite? Uh, what style of wheels would you like to see on this uh, LS400, uh, you know? And yeah. Uh, yeah, on that, I'll uh, let you go. Wish you the best of luck on your hunts, and um, I'll catch you on the next one. Stay safe out there. Take care. Bye.